Hey everybody, Coach Coral here for another edition of Training Tip Tuesday. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about race days, or pardon me, race week strategies so that you can bring your A game come race day. So this is a pretty timely topic. Uh, here for Team Babe, we have a number of ladies racing Ironman Texas this week. Our dream team, Kim Grayson Glare, so clear, so shout out to them. Um, and then also a number of dear friends, training partners, and uh, a couple Team Boo affiliates doing St. Anthony's Olympic distance here in Clearwater. So big race week. And so hopefully some of these tips can be of use this week, or if you've got a race coming up in the near future, you can file these away so that you can be 100% race ready come race day. So we're gonna break this down, kind of a theme here into our three part strategy. So the first one is going to be prep whatever you can at home first. So there's a lot of different logistics that go into a race day, but there's a lot of prep work that you can do in the days leading up to your race so that come race day, it's a pretty calm event. You're just able to go through the flow, go through the motions of uh, you know, setting things up, et cetera, uh, and all of the thinking work has been taken out of it in advance. So here, here's really what I'm talking about. So um, if you're doing an Ironman distance race or a half, uh, a lot of local races too will have an athlete guide that's available for you to read through the logistics of packet pickup, the location of the race, the race course. This is super important because you do need to know where to go and all the other details that are going to help you be a successful athlete and participant on the race day. So please, please, please. This is one of the biggest frustrations I know for race directors too, that they provide a resource, but it's not utilized. So do some digging, make sure you're able to, to review that and digest very well all the information that's available there for you. Uh, sometimes also in the race, uh, excuse me, in the athlete guide, They'll also have information about what's available for on-course nutrition and any parking information. All of these really helpful tidbits that you're able to gain an awareness of prior to rocking up to the race site and just going, hey, what's going on, guys? So definitely, definitely, definitely read the athlete guide. Uh, a couple other things. I know many triathletes and multi-sport athletes are very diligent with lists and race week is no exception. Make your checklist for your packing list, especially if you're going out of town. Um, if you're interested, I actually have a really helpful packing list that I've developed over the years that you can add and modify to fit your needs. So if you would like a copy of that, let me know and I'm happy to share it. Uh, and then also make your race day checklist. Go through a mental timeline and write it out pen and paper or an Excel spreadsheet, whatever works best for you, but make a, an actual list of what your race day flow looks like, or you can even start the night before. Friday night, we're gonna go to pack up pickup at 5 p.m. Check, you know, write the little details about what you're gonna do at packet pickup, to bed at nine, up at 4.30 the next morning, and just from there, just go through time-wise so you know you can even set reminders on your garment if you're <laughs> that type of person just to keep you on point. And you are, again, taking the thinking work out of this, you've already got down to the minute, down to the letter, exactly what you need to do leading up to race day and to the race start time, what you need to do to be successful. So, but I can't stress the packing list enough because that's the last thing you want to do is to show up to the race site and I've forgotten a couple things. Uh, something I also do is sometimes I'll pack extra, like goggles, things like this. So in case you need a spare or if someone else has forgotten their, to do their packing list, you can help somebody else out. So just uh, make a note of that. Uh, again, as far as logistics, just double check, if, especially if you're going out of town. For instance, I'm traveling to Ironman Texas this week, not racing, but traveling for sure. So I've made a point to double check 
uh, hey, Kristen, good to see you. I've made a point to double check that my Airbnb reservation is still good to go. They know what time I'm arriving, that my flights are good, rental car, I've got my own packing list. So all of these details, I don't know what time I'm leaving, just all of these logistical items, you're just double checking and making sure that everything is in squared away and that you're good to go. And then one of the other best things that you can do for yourself and for your bike to have a wonderful, smooth race day experience is if you haven't yet done so, get this done right, right now, is to take your bike to your favorite local bike shop that you trust and have them do a quick inspection and a quick tune-up on your race bike. So this is very important, especially if you're coming off off season, hopefully you've already had an inspection and, and whatnot, but if any adjustments need to be made to your bike, again, please make, make, it, make a reservation well in advance. A lot of times this is crunch time for bike shops, um, but just have everything checked out that you're good to go so you don't have to deal with any mechanical issues on race day. That's just that, it's such so frustrating when that does happen. Um, so again, eliminating all of these variables from race day so that you are ready to go. All right, so the prep at home, just a quick recap. We're reading the athlete guide. You've made your packing list. You're checking it twice, three times, four times. You've double checked your travel logistics and anything that goes around that. And you've also taken your bike into your bike shop for a good tune-up checkup so that you're ready to roll. All right, moving on. Tip number two for a very successful race week is when you go to packet pickup, do this early. So sometimes we're coming in just on race day, but if you're living local to your race site or you're traveling in early, make a point, do yourself a favor to reduce some stress on race day and go to packet pickup early. A lot of times this is held near or around the race site itself. So one, you kind of get the excitement of going and interacting with other athletes. You're possibly able to meet the race director or course director and just say hello, thank the volunteers, please, that are at Packet Pickup. But it just gets you excited and gets your brain tuned in to your event coming up. On that note, since Packet Pickup is oftentimes near or around the race site, take that opportunity to check out the race course itself and do a little bit of course reconnaissance. So things to note for a triathlon specifically are, where is the race start? Where is the swim start? If you can get in or just wait in the water a little bit, are there any obstacles that you're needing to be cautious of or conscientious of as you're entering, but also at the swim exit when you're coming out? Uh, and then from there, walk the course, walk up from the swim exit, check out transition. Sometimes there are different bike in and bike out. When you come in from the swim, you might be leaving uh, from a different location to head out on your bike ride. And then if you can, if you even want to drive the bike course, if it's kind of a technical or a different space than, uh, or a different location than where you're from, this can be a good opportunity to make sure that you're aware of any dangerous corners, turns, descents, anything along those lines. And then coming back from your bike course reconnaissance or just mentally you've gone on your bike ride, find out where you're supposed to come in from the bike and then leave from the run and then finally the finish line. This is also a good opportunity too if you have someone that is going to be doing the wonderful job of spectating and cheering you on. Make sure that you have a rendezvous, rendezvous point for post-race so that you're not uh, walking around and potentially losing your support group. Uh, also note that oftentimes cell phones are not allowed on race course, so this is also an important point just to file away for post-race. And then finally, the third point and the best thing that you can do for yourself during race week, physically all the hay is in the barn, so to speak. So there's no point in going out and trying to, and I've heard this happen, <laughs> um, of people going out and going, oh man, like, I don't know if I can finish it. And you know, the Thursday before a race, they'll do a test run. Absolutely. Don't do this. All of your training is locked and loaded. This week, leading up to race week, and sometimes a little bit prior to race week, this is a topic for another time, 
Um, but what you really need to be focusing on is physically recovering and working on your mental game. So hopefully you've been doing a little bit of preparation on your mental game leading into race day. Um, but really focus on mentally running through your race from race morning, waking up, have a very clear mental image and meant kind of a mental video even of what it looks like to wake up. You're excited. You're making your breakfast. You're putting your bag in the car, just visualizing all of the things that you are manifesting for a very smooth race uh, and running through the motions so that once you are physically at your race, you've already run through the race a million times. And something else that I always like to have athletes do as well is envisioning what happens should you have something go sideways. And one of the best or most common things is what do you do if you get a flat tire? Envision being calm, collected, you know how to change your flat tire. Side note, if you haven't practiced, practiced this in a while, this is a really great week to do that. Just run through and get some uh, refresher on that. But, you know, so envisioning not a, not just everything going beautifully for you, but also because things are bound to happen. Also, what happens if you lose your goggles in the swim? What happens if you get a flat on the bike? What happens, uh, you know, there's there's different if you drop your nutrition. And come up with a game plan so that when it, when, if it indeed it does happen, boom, you've already envisioned it and you know exactly your strategy to overcome, problem solve, and help you move forward with your race so that those sideways moments don't define your race outcome and you're still able to finish strong. So just to recap, number one, we're prepping at home first with all of the logistics that we can take care of beforehand, before race day arrives, to really think, take that thinking piece out of race day so that we're just on autopilot once the race day hits. Two, hopefully you're able to go to packet pickup early and do a little bit of course reconnaissance. And again, if you can't do the course recon prior to the race in person, you've at least read it in the athlete guide. And then finally, race week is really that space that you're able to let your physical body recover and instead do more mental training and make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row. So I hope that this is helpful. If you have any questions about race, race week prep, race day prep, or taper, which I'll talk about definitely in another edition of Training Tip Tuesday, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we wish everyone who has a race coming up this week, particularly, particularly our team babe gals and training partners, just an incredibly fun day. This is your victory lap, so we hope you enjoy it. Take care and have an awesome day.